Hey guys, what's going on? This is Kyle at Projection Hub, and today I'm bringing you another video about how to use AI or ChatGPT specifically to write a business plan for you. You know, I'm going to be demonstrating an example on exactly how you can do this for a startup business. And what I really like about the approach I'm going to show you today is it's not kind of going in and totally surrendering the business plan to, you know, an LLM or an AI chatbot and just saying like, do this whole thing for me. Because I think the risk in doing that and what we've seen a lot in the industry is just that leaves a lackluster business plan that ultimately the the owner and the, the author of the business plan doesn't really know what's in there, right? It's lacking soul. It's lacking that human touch. But also when we have this technology at our fingertips, it seems like it'd be a little bit silly to sit down and write every single word custom, you know, on, on your own, just because of the time that might take. And so this approach is going to kind of be more of a hybrid between the two. Like how do we, how do we use chat GPT to do the heavy lifting, but ensure that it's got the human touch and that vision is still there all the way through. And so I'm going to demonstrate how to do that with a kind of fictitious example for you today. And yeah, we'll see, see what you like. If you, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel. That really helps us as a fellow small business. But ultimately what I hope you get out of this is just feeling like you have another tool in your toolbox for, you know, creating your business plan, getting your, your startup or, or your business plan or whatever, for whatever your purpose, you're doing that off the ground. And if at any point you have any questions just about your business plan or your financial projections, which we'll talk about a little bit today, or, you know, preparing for an SBA loan or anything like that, drop us a line at support at projectionhub.com or leave a comment down below. And as I should have mentioned at the beginning of this video, my, my name is Kyle. And before my time with Projection Hub, I was an SBA loan officer for almost seven years. And so during my time there, that looked like helping startups and existing small businesses, you know, apply for an SBA loan by reviewing their business plan, reviewing their projections, reviewing all their documents and getting that packaged up and, you know, kind of helping them through that application process and, and reviewing their, their loan details and all of that. So, and our founder and owner, Adam Hooksma has over a decade of experience being the executive director of an SBA lender. So if you have any questions about the SBA process, your business plan, your projections for that, getting things ready, who, what lender should you go to, any of that kind of stuff, don't hesitate to reach out to us. So without further ado, let's go ahead and, and jump into this AI generated uh, business plan. All right, here we go. So at the time of recording this, it is June 4th, 2024. So you can see I am utilizing the newest ChatGPT 4.0 or Omni, I think it might stand for, model to write this business plan. And so uh, I've tested this a, a few times, done this a few times, and it has worked uh, really well. And again, what I like about this approach, approach, and you know, I have attempted to do this with every single new iteration of ChatGPT. And I know that there are other LM tools out there that you could do this with. I know that you could create a custom AI agent, all of that to do these things. But honestly, doing it this way, I have felt like is the most integrated way of doing this. Again, it's that 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 hybrid of letting the tool do a lot of the heavy lifting but maintaining the 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 soul the the vision the the human ideas and feeding that and reviewing it and kind of being you know a co-writer back and forth that has warranted some of the best results and so that's kind of what i'm going to demonstrate for you the, the point of this video is not to say like this is the most advanced way to do this so you don't have to do anything that's not this video but this hopefully feels like a more approachable way to get a, a better output and something that I think you could use in you know real life practice. So what I'm going to show you here, as you can see on my screen, I've got ChatGPT over here, and then I've got just some notes over here. And then off screen right here, I've got a few, a series of prompts we're going to use. And so I'm going to go through this kind of step by step. But for your use case purposes, if you would try to do this alongside me, what I'd first recommending recommend doing. So if you're starting a business, chances are you already have lots of ideas, lots of notes jotted down somewhere, you know? And so my recommendation would be just get a Google doc, get, get a blank document and just document what you have, right? You know, what's the name going to be? Where's it going to be? What's the concept? What's the general cost range you're thinking? You know, you can, you can see what I've got listed over here, right? So this is a fictitious example, but my plan, my notes so far is for Heritage Stakes, downtown Charleston, South Carolina, a little bit about me, the fake owner, you know, my experience, why it's a good opportunity, some funding plans, that kind of thing, right? So just a little bit of information. You probably have your own version of this. You might even have, you know, more information, even the better. 
You might already have some documents. You might have some financial numbers you can include in there, anything like that. So first, that's gonna be step one. You know, you can pause this video if you haven't already, get all that down on paper. And then what we're gonna do for our next step is I'm gonna take prompt one. And I'm gonna copy that over here. And I'll read it to you, right? So you can see, spell check there. I'm writing a business plan for a new steakhouse. I've included all of the context of what I know about the business down below. Produce a recommended detailed outline for the business plan. You know, and you can add more or less text if you want in there. This startup restaurant. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my notes so far. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paste that, right? All right, so I've fed it that information. And also while this is writing as a quick tip, you can see how this just said memory updated. That means it's updating it so it uses that context in my other threads. If you are doing a fake example like this and you don't want it to interpret it into other things, make sure you delete the chat when you're done with it. That's just a quick thing. I think unless there's a setting to tell it not to remember it, but I'm not sure that there is. So this first step that we're doing is we're just getting the outline, the structure of the business plan we want to follow. Right. And so you'll you'll see it's kind of a, a recommended consistent thing we want to do through this approach is I think some people have the tendency, which is funny because we used to do things everything the long way. And now that we have the ability to do things lightning fast, people don't want to do any part of the, the long method. They just want to do the fastest way possible, which that's where you lose the human touch and the human expertise and kind of the creativity in that. And so what you'll see here is we want to just do tidbits, right? We want to do step one, and then we go through and we want to refine this, right? So it's doing the heavy lifting so that you don't have to sit there and stare at a blank page and be like, ah, oh, what's next? What's, what's next? Or go research this link and that link. But we get a nice starting point, and then we go through and we refine this, okay? So now I'm going to, and I like to do things outside of ChatGPT. I like to use a, a working Google Doc or something like that, right? So I'm going to take the executive summary it gave me. And I'm just going to take that and I'm going to put it over here in my notes, right? It always formats it weird. So I just like to, I like to just do that. And I just like to clear the formatting, right? It's, it doesn't look amazing, but you get the point. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing this again, because this is just a fake example, but I would go through and spend some time, review your outline and refine that. If there are some things that don't make sense to you, um, you know, then you don't necessarily need to do that. But you know, let's just assume we think that it looks good. And, you know, yeah, we like how we like how it looks. So we're gonna move on to step two, okay. And then we're gonna I'm gonna come over here and grab prompt number two. And I'm going to say, the notes I've provided you, please produce a list of 20 questions or less that we would need to answer in order to write a comprehensive business plan on following that outline. Please limit the amount of financial projection and assumption related questions to five or less. Just because you don't want that to be, you know, we wanted to ask us a variety of questions. We don't just want all the questions to be lots of financial projections, which hold that thought. We'll get to projections in just a second. I've got another solution for you there that you can use. So we're basically saying like, now that we've got the outline, you know, what all do we need to know in our notes? Because we know that our starting point in the notes wasn't enough to write a business plan. There's, there's things we don't know. This is where we let we lean on the tool a little bit to say like, you know, maybe you have everything up here. There's some things you need to research, but you just don't know what all you need to collect. And so we're going to have it produce a list of questions for us. We're going to let it write out its questions here. Okay, so you can see what I like how is it's kind of organizing these by kind of sections of the business plan based on the outline that we have. And you can see that it's it's running over the 20 question limit, which I think is okay. Um, but you know, it's just doing what it thinks is necessary. So then what I would do is I would pull all these questions. And again, I warned you at the beginning of this, that this approach, it requires work, but what it, it does is it, it takes the, the, uh, the hardest part is the writing, right? And it, it removes that by letting an expert writer write for you. And so I like the fact that we've got this nice list of questions. Now, what you're gonna do, and you know, I'll pause this video representing 
I'm not gonna pause, I'm gonna skip forward. But what you can pause is now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go through and I encourage you, do not use ChatGPT or anything else to answer these questions for you. Resist that temptation. Spend time going through and writing a per, write a personal detailed response to each of these questions. Make it unique to you. If there are things you think of when you're going through this, like, oh, this is an important thing to know, to know or I wish it would have asked me that, write in that question and then answer it, right? So this is your chance to, you know, you have a roadmap right here. You have someone asking, imagine it like you're being interviewed by a business coach and they're asking you about these details and just answer them. You know, don't try to do the quickest answer. Do some research if you need to. Do this process over several days if you need to. But like answer those. So I'm going to go. I'm going to answer these questions. And we're going to be right back in just a second. All right. And now I am back. I've got my questions answered. So you can see here, you know, I've got all my questions answered. And again, for example's sake, I did this. And it's not as detailed as I would do if I was owning a business. For example, who are the primary competitors in Charleston Steakhouse Market? I wouldn't just put the competitor. I would put who they are, where they're located, what they do well, what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses. You're gonna to wanna to put a lot of thought and information into this. So I, although it's tempting to like sit down and just be like, do everything for me, the thread's not going anywhere. I would recommend and encourage you to just do this over several days. Throw this into Google Doc, spend some time thoughtfully answering things. The more information you can give this process, the, the better off you will be. Okay, but let's assume we got all of our questions answered. We're ready to proceed. That means we're gonna move forward with prompt number three. Okay, so let's grab that, come over here. So okay, now it's time to actually write the business plan, following the outline, using the answers to the questions, all the context I've already provided. Once you write each section, this is key, one at a time for me to review before moving on to the next section. I also want you to write in first person as if you were a business owner. The tone should be down to earth, casual, but confident in the plan. Consider all the details provided to produce comprehensive and variety in each section. Do not hallucinate or make up anything that isn't true, or you could say in there that I haven't already told you. Creative gap filling is okay to make sure the business plan reads well and is not too short, but I'd like each major section to be more than 500 words or as long as necessary. And so then we're gonna grab the answers to all of our questions. Okay, so I'm copying all of these. And I am going to put those down here underneath that. This time I'm actually not using the answers to the questions. I'm gonna say which are down below. All right, and let's see what we get for our first section. Okay, so now it's gonna start writing. What I would recommend doing is get a, a blank document open Right. And sometimes when, if you're doing this at the beginning, you just, you might need to redirect it a little bit, maybe offer some, some new specifications and let's see where this is going. Right. So first thing that I noticed that it's doing is it is writing, but I, I wish that it would have included the subsections of our, of our outline. Right. Okay. So let's say, let's try that again. I'd like each major section to be organized with subsections and headings. Okay. Just, and it usually would just remember and it'll do that moving forward. Right. So now we get a little bit more organization in the way we like that structure. Okay. So let's just, while it's doing that, let's double check. Let's see what it's doing over here. All right, so you can see it's going a little off the rails, right? It's just it's just going forward, right? I don't we don't want it to do the whole business plan at once, right? Because then it's going to be really short. It's not going to be as detailed, and so we're going to at least let it finish its train of thought, and then we're going to, you know, redirect it to not do that, right? So let's go back up and just let's just re I want to see this reminder what we said to it. Okay, so I'm just gonna remind it. Let's do it again. But remember, I only to write one section at a time. For, for example, let's do the executive summary. 
its subsections, then I will review and offer feedback and I will give you permission to proceed with the next section, which would be the company description. Let's see if it gets us back on track. Sometimes every time you approach us, it's like whether there's an update or a new thing happens, you just kind of retrain it to do exactly what you would want. And then once you kind of got it dialed in, then you can just start moving through it a little bit more quickly, right? All right, so I think that this looks pretty good. So if I was doing this for real, my business plan, I would read this through a bunch of times, right? And this is your chance to, to give it some feedback, tweak it a little bit before we, you know, so we said, we wait till I tell you to proceed to the next section and how you have it exactly how you want. But if you think it looks good or if you've gone through a few iterations and you like it, we're gonna take that, we're gonna move it over to our business plan. Again, I like to select all, clear formatting, and then you can go through and kind of do your own formatting, your own spacing of that. But if you've got it dialed in, maybe you went and provided some, some tweaks, but just make sure, make sure you don't just like read it, take its word for it and paste it in. You wanna actually read through and make sure like, yes, this aligns with what I told it to. Or if you thought of a new thing that you hadn't thought of, you can kind of add that in, but make sure you add it in here um, so that it remembers that key detail moving forward. If you just take that over and then edit it over here, it's not gonna know those changes were made. So you need to make sure you inform it of those changes. But let's assume it looks good. Please proceed. You could just say, please proceed. If you wanna make sure it's specific, you can say with the company description section. So then it's gonna move forward with that section. And then we're just gonna do this. We're gonna step through each section doing this, this kind of exact exercise until we have a completed, you know, fully written out business plan. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna fast forward and jump to when we've got most everything created except down to the financial projection section because that's gonna be a different unique challenge for ChatGPT and I'll give you some solutions for that. So we'll see you over there. Okay, now that we've gotten our business plan draft written, we I went back and forth with ChatGPT and you know had to go section by section and gave it some, some guidance along the way. We made it through a full draft. And the one thing I really wanna talk about is if we come down here, so I got it all copied into my draft. I've removed all of the formatting and I haven't made it look nice or anything like that yet, but we got all of our information in here. And this has already been reviewed by, by me, right? I didn't just blindly copy and paste this. This is a product of the feedback and the review and the ideas and all that stuff they gave us. So that's that human, human touch. But we're gonna go down to our financial projection section. Keep going, there we go. And so you can see how it's just, as you'd expect for a language model, right? It's giving me this all in writing, right? We've got the numbers associated with things, which it's, it's real, right? It gives me my projections, revenue, net income, some assumptions, whatnot. But real life use case situation, that's not gonna suffice for your, your lender. They're going to want to see a full set of projections, like financial statements, you know, maybe even a spreadsheet version but they're gonna to wanna to see the full thing. So they can see the line items, they can see the assumptions that went into it. They can see, you know, how many tables are you including the turnover rate? You know, they're, they're just gonna to wanna to see more details as much as you can give them for that. And so this section is a nice roadmap, but we're gonna to have to do this stuff manually, right? And so one thing I'll show you, so we've got, we've, we've done 90% of the work, right? We've got it all in here. It's what we wanted. We've already reviewed it. You know, we kind of co-authored this process. And so now I'm gonna hop over to just a, a cleaned up example version, right? So you can see it's got a nice cover. It's got a nice cover page there. We've got our table of contents. We've just got some formatting applied and some maps and some screenshots from the location. So, but this is gonna, it's a very similar structure to what we had just done. We just clean, I just created a cleaned up version to give you an example. And so I'll keep going through because I'm going to go all down the financial projections so you can see the example of this. And so you can see how it's similar information to our financial projections, but we're going to just have some more visual aids here, right? It's going to break down our costs. So you can see that a little bit more visually. We can see some actual, and I know I'm split screen here, so it may be a little blurry because it's 
zoomed out from that, but you can see like a five-year profit and loss summary here with some line items of our projections. This is some restaurant specific projection data. So, you know, customers served, how many, you know, average spend per customer on food and drink versus alcohol, average spend per customer takeout orders, revenue takeout, our food cost percentage. How many employees are we going to have? We got key ratios. Uh, we got a revenue and profitability, our gross profit chart margin. We've got our monthly operating expenses. We've got our actual five-year, you know, financial statements for our income statement, cash flow statement, balance sheet, break even analysis, you know, so, so you get my point. Chat GPT can't do that. Not yet, right? <laughs> I'm not I'm not under any illusion that someday that that's coming and we'll do that, but that's not its forte right now. It does a great job writing some narrative. I think particularly if you use this method where you're, again, you're co-authoring it and you're making sure it's only writing what you're providing it, but you're just helping it guide you. I think it does a really nice job, but when it comes to the projections, it needs to be done in a specific way that that world hasn't changed yet. And so just to, as a quick plug, that was all made using this projection template. So you can, you can, there's a link down in the description below. We've got over a hundred different financial projection templates for a hundred different industries. And just to give you a real quick commercial of what this looks like, so you can see all these charts and graphs, but we only change things on these blue tabs and we only edit things in these blue boxes, no blue tabs. So we start with our assumptions, like, are you going to have investors? When do you want them to start? What assets do you need to purchase for the business? Are you going to have any loans? And then what's really cool and why I recommend doing this, right? So let's say even ChatGPT could produce the projections for you. What you're missing in that process is you don't know what went into those projections. You don't know the assumptions. They're not specific to your restaurant. And so by going through the process of creating your projections, one, you could hire someone to do it and that's still gonna be an integrated process. Like you're going to be answering their questions. You're gonna be kind of building the projections together even if you're not the one actually punching the numbers in. You're gonna be giving the assumptions for that. But if you use a template like this, we have them geared by industry. So for instance, this is the restaurant one. You're gonna be putting things in like, how many seats are in the restaurant? How many days are you open? What's the average party size? This does breakfast, lunch, and dinner in this example. What's your estimated capacity going to be? What does the menu look like? You know, it's not complicated, but it does, you know, you, it's specific, right? You're putting information in. Your direct costs, so like your servers, you know, your, your labor, your hourly labor included in here, our monthly operating expenses. And then if we have any salaried employees, then we'll handle it here. And then it's going to generate all of the financial statements, annual, uh, I know my face is kind of in the way, but you're going to get the annual breakdown, just like I showed you in the business plan, as well as the monthly detail for each of those financial statements. So those charts in this completed kind of cleaned up version, example version here, come from using a template like that. And so we've got, as I mentioned, this is all right straight off our website. We've got hundreds of different industries. I There is a link down in the description below. You can put in the promo code if you want to go get your own template. Every template comes with free support. Um, from our experts. We even offer a complimentary review of your projections for free. And we offer uh, a 30 day, 100% money back guarantee if you don't like the template or if it didn't work out for you. So all that to say this, the point of the video wasn't to show you that today. It was to show you, this is a way to write a business plan, you know, on your own. If you feel like you would take, like to take that approach that I think is better well-received or would be better received than just like, telling ChatGPT just write my business plan because you're just not going to get enough out of it. You're not going to get enough detail. You're going to miss a lot of things. Doing this process ensures that you contributed to it. I think you'll feel good after it, not like you, you know, you cheated or something like that. And just to hop back over to this example, you know, you can clean it up and make it look nice, add in your projections in there. And you know, your, your lender might even just want the file that you created the projections with. And the very last thing I'll leave you with, uh, a nice thing you can do at the end of this process is, so you could just go and download, you could download your projections as like a Word doc or PDF or whatever. And you can now do attachments in ChatGPT. And one last thing you can do is basically request a review. You know, you can say like, I've attached a completed draft of the business plan, please. You know, and I'll actually, I'll include the, the prompts that I used down in the description below. So you can quickly copy and paste them if you'd like to use them. But I've, you know, one last prompt where basically you can just say, go through, actually, let me just copy and paste it and show you. 
And so here I've got the example of our business plan uploading and I've got right here, attach a completed thing. Please do an audit and identify any areas that we may need additional info, um, that we may need additional info, deviate from the notes and context if ready or anything that could prove, improve the business plan if we had additional information. And you can kind of let it do do its thing. I think this is a, a nice step to, maybe you did your best to read everything it said, but you, maybe you, you glanced through some of it, which I wouldn't recommend doing. This could be a way to get a chance for it to say like, hey, did you, is there anything you, you made up, you know, or, you know, elaborate on that you shouldn't have? And it might just give you some nice things that, you know, even it, it might own up to saying like, I'm not the best at doing that thing. It'd be best if you just went and provided some actual research for that. Or whatnot. Now we're not going to go through all of these details, and I actually downloaded the wrong one <laughs> there. I didn't download the the one that I just did with you. Um, but that's a nice last step you could do is basically ask it to do the analysis, do the audit, and if it does point out some things that you think you agree, then ask it to rewrite a specific a specific section, and you can kind of copy that back in um, and do it that way too. So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. You can even reach out to us at support at projectionhub.com. Especially if you have questions about the financial projection section, if you need to pick out a template or if you even want help just someone doing your projections for you, we would be happy to do that. And if you're planning on trying to get financing, right? If you're gonna go the small business loan or the SBA loan route, that's an area we have a lot of expertise in. We'd be happy to help answer, help answer any questions you might have about the SBA loan application process or where to apply for a loan or anything like that. We've got lots of videos, many are industry specific about an SBA loan checklists and all that kind of stuff doing that for free. So if this is your kind of thing, I hope this is a helpful uh, practice for you. And uh, yeah, wish you the best of luck and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.